know, I've been spending a lot of time in the house lately, sitting in front of the computer, trying to get website stuff done, video editing, all that kind of stuff. I really haven't been taking any time to do any random stuff that I used to do. I used to just get up in the morning and go out in the workshop and start doing something. And at the end of the day, I might have nothing or I might have something worth looking at. I was looking through the drawer yesterday and I found that I have two of these things right here. These are small pry bars. And if you have two of these, you have one too many. Also what I found, well I didn't find it because it wasn't lost, it's my other piece of my carta that I made. It's the one with the maple inlays. I really didn't have a project in mind for it when I made it, but it will make a good handle for this new knife that I'm going to make out of this pry bar. Now my usual first step before I make a knife is to make something that represents it in wood. And here I've made a little bit of a pattern out of just spruce that I cut the thickness and shaped to size so that I can actually grip it and see how it feels. You know, it doesn't have the thickness of the handle yet, but you can get the overall feel of it. And the blade length and the shape. The next thing to do is to clean up the pry bar a bit so I can draw the pattern. During all the machining operations, I'm being very careful not to overheat the blade. The great thing about these pry bars is how hard the steel is. To begin with, you don't have to do anything to harden it. All you have to do is be careful while you're shaping it not to draw the temper. Now I'm going to use a black marker to draw the outline. I'm using my angle grinder to make the rough cut. Now I can fine tune the shape on the belt sander. It's a good idea to have a bucket of water or something to cool the blade while you're working it. You don't want to overheat the blade. Now that I have the blade in shape, I can finish cleaning it up. Now that the blade is cleaned up, I can work on the handles. First I need to cut my piece of micarta in half. Now I'm going to take my original template and I've marked out four inches and that's the length of the handle that I want. So now that I have the length marked out, I'm just going to freehand what I want the shape to be. I kind of want it to mirror how it is on the end here. So I'm going to come down straight and then curve back out just slightly. So now I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to use that as a pattern to cut out my handle part. I want these two pieces of wood inlay on the front half so that the hole for the lanyard isn't going through them. So I can see that the front of my handle needs to line up pretty close to the end where I cut it off. So I'll just flip it over and I'll lay my handle on, holding it back about a sixteenth from the end. Try to center it as much as I can and mark them out. Okay, now I'm ready to mark out the other one. It's important to flip the pattern over so you don't wind up with its two halves the same. So you want a mirror image on the other one. Just gonna mark that out and then I can cut them on the bandsaw. Before gluing the handles on, I want to clean up the ends towards the blade because it'll be very difficult to do them afterwards. I clean the blade with some alcohol to make sure there's no oil or any residue on there. I also clean the inside parts of the handle. I also took the time to drill a hole where the hole is in the blade because I don't want to try to find that after. I won't be able to see it. Now I'm just going to mix up some 5 minute epoxy and glue the handles on. Okay, I've got it all lined up properly and clamped on with spring clamps. I'll leave that for a couple hours to let it dry. I gave it a couple hours to dry now and sanding off the excess epoxy. Next I can start shaping the blade. I prefer a full convex grind and what that is is it's rounded from the spine right to the tip. I do the majority of this with the grinder just using an ordinary grinding disc. Once again, I need to be careful not to be too aggressive and make sure that I don't overheat the blade. When I'm happy with the first side, I can flip the knife over and start working on the other side. 
Next, I take it back to the belt sander to finish shaping the blade. Here, I'm keeping my finger on the blade to check the temperature to make sure it's not getting too hot. Back to the grinder, but now I'm using a flap sanding disc. Now I'm flattening the blade with an oil stone. Now I'm using 400 grit sandpaper to do the final smoothing. All right, if you look behind me, you'll see that it's it's dark out. I've been doing this since three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm trying to make it a one day project and I'm at this point now. I have the blade finished to the point where I don't have to work on it anymore until I sharpen it. I'm not going to go crazy with the uh, polish on that. I'm just going to leave it relatively uh, matte, you could say. The handle is next. I'm going to do the final shaping on that. The majority of the shaping on the handle is done freehand. And for that I'm using the grinder with the flap sander. The final sanding is done with a strip of sandpaper. For the handle I'm going to give it several coats of linseed oil. Rubbing each one on, wiping off the excess and letting it dry. It will take a few days to build up several coats. Well, there you have it. One day, one knife. Actually, it wasn't a full day because it's now around 8.30. I started this around 3, like I said earlier. And although it's not 100% finished, there's still some finishing and sharpening to do. It is a complete knife ready to use at this point. One thing I did forget was to drill the hole for the lanyard. And uh, I'll wait until this coat dries and then I'll do that and uh, carry on with the finishing. I hope you liked it and thanks for watching. The project's not 100% finished yet, but the pictures you see next are, so I hope you enjoy those.